Hi, I'm John Miller. I'm a GT racer in IMSA SRO at the Nürburgring, Kerventic races, Asian Le Mans, all over the world. Uh, I also coach in the Ferrari Challenge Series, both in the US and abroad. We're here today at CXC's headquarters in the Motion Pro 2 simulator. And today's lessons will apply to any simulator, but especially to those who are CXC owners. First things first, you wanna have a nice high quality setup. And what does that mean? It, well, it's a few things like having a high quality direct drive steering wheel that gives you a lot of feedback, a lot of feel. Then you, next, you wanna have really good pedals, it gives you good braking feel and feedback, good throttle feel. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to get a turnkey package with somebody like CXC Simulations in this Motion Pro 2. So once you get into the sim, you wanna make sure that your seating position is correct. And there's a couple different things you wanna pay attention to once you sit down. So first thing, you wanna adjust the pedals to where you have a nice bend in your knee and you're able to get full extension, full brake pressure, full throttle and clutch usage without your legs being extended too far. You want your arms to be able to reach the wheel. I kind of measure it by putting my arms straight out and making sure my wrists break over the wheel. This is actually maybe a little too close for me. I'll push it a little further away. There we go. And then just making sure that you have full range of motion on the wheel from lock to lock. Clutch, brake, and throttle, all appropriate with a little bit of bend in the knee, and I'm ready to go. All right, so up next, if you're on a CXC Motion Pro 2 or any other sim with a seatbelt tensioner, make sure your seatbelts are nice and tight and adjusted correctly, just like in the real race car. Tighten them down, shoulder belts, lap belts, and good to go. So next up, if you're on a sim with motion adjustability, make sure that it's adjusted correctly for your preferences. Second, we've got brake pressure. Again, adjust to your taste. And finally, the vibration setting. Adjust to your taste and your preference settings. What you may like may not work for your friend and vice versa. So I recommend taking a few minutes to play with these, uh, test out a few different settings and find what works for you. Next up, choose a steering wheel. Make sure it's the one appropriate for the car you're driving in the sim. If you're on a CXC sim and you wanna share your data and your telemetry with your teammates or with your sim coach, all you need to do is push this VB sim button right here. Next up, before you jump into a session in iRacing, you wanna set the track conditions and the weather. You have a few different things you can play with here, like humidity, temperature, wind speed, time of day, and starting track state. One way to do it is also to set the track state and weather to be completely static so that it doesn't change throughout the session. Now, this isn't natural to how you would actually drive because obviously the weather and the track state changes throughout the day in real life. However, it's a good way to get a baseline for a car and a track that you've never driven before or that you haven't driven in, in a while. Once you've got a good baseline and you're kind of in the window, then I would go in and create weather conditions that are likely to match the weather conditions of the real life event that you plan on racing. So if you're gonna be racing in the morning, set the weather conditions to match the time of day. And if you're gonna be racing there in, in the summer, you want the temperature to be a little higher, those kinds of things. So you can create uh, the environment that you want within iRacing before you go and drive. And if you find that it's not working for you, you can always jump out and make a change to those track conditions, but it's all doable within iRacing. The next thing to adjust is the force feedback strength. Now that will vary from car to car in real life, just as it'll vary in the sim. You can adjust it via the bar there in the force feedback settings on the menu. And you wanna find something that matches the real life car based on uh, it, whether it has power steering, uh, adjustable power steering or no power steering at all. And again, this is kind of to your taste and to your preference. Uh, and you can really make this, the wheel difficult to turn with more force feedback or easier to turn to mimic power steering with a lower force feedback setting. So moving on to car setup. Now, we are racing the 488 GT3 Evo in iRacing because we don't have the Ferrari Challenge car specifically, so we have to try and do some things to this car to make it match or at least approach the feeling of a Challenge car. Some of the things we can do are to adjust the brakes. So what we do is we dial the brake bias forward and we raise the ABS settings. We can also add some weight to the car in iRacing. On the top right there, you see weight penalty. You can add some weight to the 48 GT3. 
and that will affect the car's balance in the corners and it will elongate the brake zones in the GT3 car uh, to mimic more like what you have in the Challenge car. Unfortunately, we can't add horsepower to the GT3 car in iRacing. Uh, obviously, the 488 Challenge car has quite a bit of horsepower, but we're really trying to mimic the brake feel and the handling feel. So we, we like to add weight. We like to adjust the brake pressure settings on the bias and the ABS by increasing those uh, with a lot of front bias and some extra ABS settings. We can also do things like raise the car up a bit, uh, do some things to take away some of the grip in the corners by raising the ride height, softening the spring rates, things like that. So again, we're trying to mimic more of what the 48 Challenge car feels like by detuning the 48 GT3 a bit and uh, making the braking feel and the, the handling mimic more like what the Challenge car is like. Now, again, it's a bit of a compromise here, but uh, there are some things we can do. And we've created a setup that we think really uh, gets pretty close. And so if you want to download that, it's in the, the link is in the description below. Today's Ferrari Challenge lesson is at Sonoma Raceway. One of my favorites and one of the best tracks in California. So start off with a slow speed track walk drive around while I'll explain some of the features of Sonoma Raceway. So leaving pit lane here, as you can tell already, lots of elevation change here in Sonoma. Come up under the bridge, and we're gonna stay tight to the left here as we exit pit lane and uh, turn one, turn two here. We're actually kind of entering turn two. We've got a big uphill climb. We wanna make sure that we set up for turn two here. Uphill brake zone, and it's really tempting to wanna to turn in early. Uh, it's a blind entry apex is just over the hill there beyond where you can see. But we wanna stay tight to this left-hand curb for as long as possible. Now, in reality, uh, the real Sonoma Raceway is very bumpy um, and the track surface is extremely abrasive. The tires wear really quickly and, uh, and that dirty line forms very quickly. So uh, really pay attention to car placement here and be really precise with your inputs. Turn two here, we want to get it in about third gear and in the sim this curb is pretty high. You can see it can kind of upset the car. In reality, that curb is pretty flat. So we wanna be using all of that curb uh, as much as we can in, in the sim without upsetting the car. But definitely uh, in reality, when you get there, you can put your right side tires completely on this curb. It's nice and flat, has a good amount of grip and allows you to really optimize your line through this corner. Now, you run out of road pretty quickly here at the exit. So you accelerate, use all the road, all the curb, and then quickly start to bring it back to the right. You'll go up to third gear, uh, up to fourth gear, probably right before turn in here. And really, uh, most people end up over slowing this corner because it's initially downhill, but then it compresses right at the apex and you go back uphill again. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna leave it in fourth gear, light brush of the brake on the way in, eyes in, turn it in, compression at the apex. We're going downhill, now boom, we're going back uphill on the gas in fourth gear. We don't want to track out all the way to the right. We want to stay about mid road on the throttle as we go up the hill here, then a big lift just to help point the nose. This curb in the sim and in real life will upset the car big time. So you can, you can get down and use about uh, the first maybe four or five inches of the curb is okay, but then it's got a really abrupt rise and you'll find that it, uh, it will upset the car big time. And if you turn in too early there in real life, um, you'll, you may end up off the road or with, with two tires in the air. It makes for a cool picture, but it uh, doesn't make for good lap time. So uh, with turn four, the trick here is to get back on the throttle and carry a lot more speed than you initially think you can, because as you come over the rise, uh, the brake zone comes into view, but it's, it's again, it's a blind entry to the corner there. So you have to kind of trust the road, trust your track knowledge, spend a little bit of extra time doing laps on the sim here uh, to get comfortable with carrying speed over turn four, because it's a real opportunity for you uh, both uh, to find lap time and to make passes into turn five, because uh, if you can be stronger than the driver in front of you uh, coming through turn four, you can carry a lot of speed and actually turn this next corner into a passing zone. So carry big speed, like we just talked about, use all the curb at track out, and we wanna break somewhere about a car length before this left side curb ends, uh, both in the sim and in real life. That's a good break point to use. We'll go down a couple gears from fourth, probably down to second, 
maybe third in, in, uh, in the real car. Try to carry as much speed. This is a big trail brake corner. Because it's downhill, the, uh, the grip of the track is fighting against the car. You really have to trail and be patient. Don't pop off the brakes. You can pick up a lot of understeer that way. Uh, apex curb here, uh, pretty true to life uh, in the sim here. It's pretty big. You can use a little bit of it, but I wouldn't clobber the whole thing. And you don't want to get to it too early. Um, that curb, if you touch it too early, if you apex early and use a lot of curb, then you're going to end up uh, probably running wide here at the exit and being late to throttle. Now, exit of five here. Want to get the throttle as soon as we can. Grabbing gears all the way up to third, up to fourth, probably up to fifth. This will be nearly flat out, this turn six approach to the carousel. Uh, on new tires, it's, it's probably full throttle flat the whole way in, in real life. Uh, on the sim here, it's definitely flat once the tires are warm. Now, approaching the carousel, really difficult technical section here because it's a blind entry. You're noticing a theme here at Sonoma, a lot of blind entries. It's very difficult visually because of all of the elevation changes. So we approach the corner, uphill on the way in, right about at the crest of the hill, just before the hill crests and the car gets really light, you wanna get on the brakes. Start slowing the car down from fifth gear down to fourth gear. And I'm about middle of the road here, which is right where I am in real life as well. I don't wanna to be too far to the right and I'm not too far to the inside. And I wanna carry big speed through the center of the corner here, trail the brake through the middle, really add a lot of steering and then start to pick up the gas. And it's a very late apex all the way down to the bottom here. You can see that's where the curb starts. And then right where the, the track flattens back out here, it rejoins the drag strip. In real life, the car has a tendency to want to step out here, to want to lose the rear or even pick up more understeer. It's generally a loss of grip um, as you get to the bottom of the carousel here and the exit of the corner. So just be prepared uh, for the grip level to change once you start to exit the corner here. But now that, you, now that you're on the drag strip, you've got this whole wide section of racetrack to use all the way out. You should be on full throttle before you get to track out and you can use that curb. Now we've got the car settled, pointed straight where we want it to go here for the next brake zone. And on the left side of the road here, you see some signs up ahead. In the sim, you've got a, a blue nationwide sign as your brake reference marker. In real life, off to the left hand side, it'll be a, a white Toyota sign, I believe it was the last time I was there a couple months ago. So again, you want to be looking up to your left as you approach the next brake zone here into turn eight to pick your brake reference markers. We'll move forward a little bit here. This brake, uh, this brake zone can be very bumpy, uh, and especially if it rains, the left side of the road here, the main line holds water for a long time. So. You may want to just pick your uh, pick your line through the brakes on here carefully, especially if it had been wet uh, the day before. This track tends to to hold water; so it doesn't drain very well. So just be mindful that one of the differences between the sim and reality, um, again, is track surface is always changing in reality. All right. So as we turn in here, we're going to end up trailing the brake in and carrying a lot of entry speed and getting way out wide here over the white line. In the sim, it's yellow. In uh, in reality, that line is white. And it gets really bumpy out here, but you want to carry the speed and really be mindful of how much throttle you go to back here. You don't want to get in too deep and get the car upset for the exit. You want to get down to probably second gear, careful with the trail brake, turn it in, get it rotated. You can even use this curb on the right side a little bit to help rotate the car if you need it. And then it's squeezed back onto full throttle up towards the really technical high speed section called the S's here. At Sonoma. Now the layout we run for Ferrari Challenge, we use the first part of the S's and then we want to get ready to, uh, to exit the S's with as much speed as possible because we head into uh, the turn 10 chicane. We don't use the, the NASCAR layout, we use an actual hard braking chicane as we exit the X's. It's a great passing zone. It's again one of those places where if you can be fast through the S's, you can set yourself up for success in the next passing zone. So. The way that I like to set up for the, the S's here to make sure that I'm right on line is right where I am right here, you see the yellow line directly in front of me. I like to center that yellow line with the car. I put my right side tires right up against the curb here, right over the center line here, 
and it's all about how do I slow down? How do I, how do I get the car transitioned for this next left-hander? I wanna just brush the brakes just a little bit right as I come off that, uh, that right side curb, get the car loaded, turn it in nice and early, get right down on this yellow line here, and by the time I'm at the curb on the left there, I wanna be back to full throttle, exiting the S's. Track out all the way to the left side of the road here, and I'm right where I wanna be. But as you can see, I'm gonna stop here. As you can see in the sim and in real life, the brake reference point ahead is very difficult because there's just not much there. Now, uh, hopefully they, they put up some brake reference markers for you, but in the sim, it's pretty difficult to find a good, re good reference point here for the, uh, the chicane here, turn 10. So we're gonna approach it slowly here. It'll be uh, second gear, and we wanna turn in nice and early and use a lot of that first part of the, uh, of the curb there. Again, the difference between the sim version of the track and the real version is, is that the curb here uh, uh, at the first part of it, nice and flat, and the second part of the curb is actually much bigger. There's more curb to use there. So you wanna really set up good on the first part of the use as much as you can without being in the dirt. And you'll be all over this second curb. And again, in, in reality, this curb, there's more, there's more to it here. It's about twice as long as it is in the sim. So you can almost put the entire car on the curb there. And then it's all about traction, getting the power down on the way out, accelerating up towards the final section here. Now, uh, the difference again in real life versus the sim, unfortunately, iRacing doesn't have the exact layout that we use in Ferrari Challenge. So we're gonna have to fudge it a little bit here. So bear with me. Uh, we'll put in the description of this video, the layout that you need to choose on iRacing. Uh, to make sure that, that where you get as close as you can get. But as you can see ahead of me here, there are a bunch of cones. If you wanna actually practice the, uh, the real version of the track that you're gonna be racing in real life for Ferrari Challenge, you can kind of fudge it here and you're just gonna go straight through these cones, just kind of ignore them. So we do have to find a breaking point for the final corner here. And it's, it's right about, in the sim, it's right about here where that first cone is. In real life, it's gonna be a little bit sooner than that. A few car lengths back behind where I am now, but let's set up through the corner here to show what I'm talking about. Final corner here. We've got these big tire bales on the inside here. Those exist in real life too. You wanna to get right down next to those, roll second gear, hold onto that apex for nice and long, squeeze onto the throttle and accelerate out right up to the, uh, the pit wall there on the left and you're gonna be going by the start finish line. That's a uh, slow lap here of Sonoma. And again, uh, with the fudge factor we have to deal with back there, that's, uh, that's the only way in iRacing to get a, a real solid uh, look at the track you're gonna be racing in real life. So start finish line here. I'll finish off the, uh, the lap here, I'm just showing you turn one, because we started by leaving the pit lane. Turn one, you're gonna be flat out across start finish line, turn in on full throttle, apex the wall here, and if you look off to the right in the sim, it does show a, uh, a wall at the exit. Again, in reality, that wall is not there. There's a, a lot of differences between the real life Sonoma uh, and the, the sim Sonoma, but they're all, they're pretty minute. So um, this is still worthwhile for you to do. Midway up the corner here, you're gonna be brushing the brake, going down one gear from sixth, probably to fifth gear, rolling the speed nice and wide here. And then right as you come up under the Toyota bridge, you add a little more steering and try and get it right down to this yellow line to set up for turn two, right where we started the track walk here. All right, getting ready to start a lap here at Sonoma Raceway, into the final corner, break nice and late, roll the speed, second gear, squeeze on the gas, manage the traction on the way out, nice and close to the wall. All right, big commitment here into turn one, eyes up, big uphill section flat all the way there light brush the brake carry the speed big steering input very bouncy trying to get to the curb there track is super bumpy through this section here up to fourth little brush to the brake big speed through turn three and four roll speed over the hill don't brake too late it's a downhill here so the track is really flatting against you nice and patient now i want to try and be flat out through here track out get back to middle of the road break right at the crest of the hill 
trail break all the way down the hill here, carry big speed, squeeze on in fourth gear, get to the apex and right at the bottom, expect a little bit of a loss of grip there. Manage the oversteer. Okay, brake nice and late here, down two gears to third gear, roll the speed, use the apex curve to rotate the car, and nice and patient on the exit here. Get it pointed, use the curb to actually help rotate the car if you need to, up a couple gears, really gotta get your eyes up through here. Lift, turn, commit, back to throttle, back at that apex curb. Now, I'd rather brake a little early here, just to make sure I get to that first apex nice and tidy. No drama, really quick transition back to the left and flat out through turn 10 here. Okay, got to fudge straight through the cones here if we want to run the true lap. Trail it all the way down inside the curve there, right side tires hugging down by the tire bales. Manage the traction, manage the wheel spin and across the line. That's a couple laps here at Sonoma Raceway in the uh, Ferrari Challenge car. Very technical track, lots of elevation, not a whole lot of rest, super fun. So a couple final thoughts on Sonoma Raceway here. Obviously the real track and the sim track have some differences and we've got to do some things to, uh, to manage the differences here uh, to really prepare as well as we can. Now, um, I think the overall track is pretty close. Uh, what you have to keep in mind is that the grip level on the real track is very, very low. So I wouldn't go chasing setup uh, on the sim looking for like peak grip. Just understand that the car is gonna move around a lot. There's a lot of blind corners here, a lot of trust. The more experience you have with the car and the more comfortable you are with the car sliding and moving around a bit, uh, both in the sim and in real life, uh, the faster you're gonna be. Spending a little bit of extra time getting really comfortable with your reference points and with the fact that some of these corners here are blind and do require a lot of commitment. Take the extra time to practice, really know where you're gonna place the car at Sonoma.